Hey everybody, welcome to Breakfast All Day, another week and more news and more marquees and more everything. Uh, Lonzo here as along with uh, Matt and Christy and uh, as always we will kick off with uh, Christy's list of headlines. I will. I want to ask you guys, how is the air where you are? We've had wildfires all over the state, all over the country. The smoke from the West Coast fires has spread all the way over to the East Coast at this point. How is it where you guys are now? Uh, we had a sky sighting this morning. It was very exciting. Was the sky blue? It was blue. It's been a while <laughs> since it's been blue. It's been all shades of like muddy gray and God knows what for the last week or so. But uh, finally today we got some, some clarity. Matt? Uh, it's pretty nice where I am. Um, I've seen the last few days I've had a lot of sky, a lot of bluish sky. Um, and now there's some clouds. So I think that most of the smoke is blowing more south towards Alonzo. So sorry. <laughs> oh, well, great. <laughs> well, that means it's heading toward me. But um, we have blue sky here. I went to the beach this morning for the first time in a couple of weeks, and uh, it actually Ooh. smelled cool and clean and like eucalyptus and morning dew. And so. Yeah, you posted that photo like a couple of days ago where it was contrasting it from like however many years ago. And it was No, it was different. 10 days ago. So I, 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 w I went for a hike up to the great little peak where there's a fantastic view of all of the the bay and usually it's blue skies and it's views for days and it's gorgeous and then on wednesday it was like smoke <laughs> and you couldn't see the ocean at all Yikes. so a 10 day 10 day change there but yeah it's getting better i think and uh so hopefully we can leave our homes mm. with masks on <laughs> right yes um okay so let's do news the news that keeps popping up whether we want it to or not Every day there's something is cuties. Now, I know we don't all feel comfortable talking about cuties, um, but I think we need to in terms of like, it's, it's a story. Like it's, it's this movie we talked about, I think last week, this um, French film and Netflix has gotten all kinds of shit for it as being misinterpreted as something that it is not. And there's been this massive cancel Netflix campaign um, mostly through wacky right-wing people like QAnon because it plays into their whole giant conspiracy theory about um, about sex trafficking and, and child molesters and uh, anyway. Yeah, the, the people who are flipping out about this movie have been awfully silent about what's going on at ICE detention facilities of late, I would say. So <laughs> if your whole rallying cry is save the children, I would say avoid the hashtag and maybe go actually help the organization save the children that's been dealing with this stuff in the real world for a long time and is not down for your nonsense. The other thing, too, is, look, you don't get to call for canceling this unless you spent the last 10 years trying to get dance moms canceled or... <laughs> in general, uh, child beauty pageants. Like, yeah. fuck you, right? right. I, like, if, if, if cuties is the thing you're mad about now, wake up. Because, uh, like, look, there's been all the... I mean, yes, did Netflix fuck up with the poster on this? Absolutely, they did. Absolutely. But, you know, I, 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 you sent that thing around, Christine, like, or somebody, a friend of mine pointed to uh, a link, I'll share it, um, a story that said that really it's because the movie's about a black girl and it's 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 racism. It's if it was sure right made if it by was, a black woman, made by a Senegalese French right, woman, right? Right, exactly. and you know we uh, because that's something that we can point and we don't want to see somebody else's life and we don't want to see the struggle that black people go through and so uh, cancel that so that we can go back to our own level of hypocrisy and um, that really just focuses on white people because that's what we're comfortable with. Well, unfortunately, this whole cancel Netflix campaign has been somewhat effective. There's a story this past week about how Netflix cancellations have spiked like eightfold. And some of that is the, you know, the normal, the churn ratio, whatever it is, that people are going to cancel things every month, and that's just going to happen. It's baked in. But this is, I guess, more than that. Matt has a finger raised like he wants to say Wait, something. Matt. Was it an 8% increase? I thought it was an 8%. I thought increase. it was eight times more. Eight, eightfold is the number I saw. Eight times oh. more than you would ordinarily have from month to month. Um, but also, it's like this past week, it was the third or fourth most, most watched thing 
on Netflix. So people are indeed tuning in, whether out of curiosity to see what is all this about or because they're hate watching it or whatever it is. Um, the writer director, Maimuna Ducare, wrote a piece in the Washington Post and she shouldn't have to do this, but she wrote a piece explaining what her thinking was with this and that it was meant to actually yes it's meant to make you feel uncomfortable because it's meant to shine a light on what girls at this age feel like they need to do to have a sense of self-worth in a society in which everything is predicated on clicks and likes and hearts and retweets or whatever um she's trying to like critique the thing that she's being accused of perpetuating right, right? Exactly. we don't like paying attention to that so we got to cancel this fucking movie because right. we don't like anyone showing a light on the way we act and the way the culture and you know and by culture i mean media we put out there that forces girls into acting a way that we're not comfortable with Right. And so, and so Ted Cruz, of all people, is calling okay, for a DOJ investigation into the production of Cuties <laughs> to make sure that no child, <laughs> child abuse um, statutes were, you know, there were no transgressions <laughs> of any sort. And, and the, the fucking, the king of like, oh, cancel culture, cancel culture is trying to cancel Netflix. It, 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 the hypocrisy is ridiculous. Ted, Ted Cruz just wants something else to come up when you Google Ted Cruz and porn. That too, that's a great point. But also he's trying to like tacitly signal to QAnon, I see you with mm -hmm. your child molestation concerns. I'm here for you. I believe oh. your bullshit. Right, without, without actually saying that outright. So this is a, a signal, it's all code. Um, I watched Cuties yesterday and you know, it is, it's a coming of age story, you know? And it's this, this young woman who is um, kind of an outsider at her new school where all the, the girls are acting kind of tough and kind of badass and she wants to fit in with them and they have this dance group called the cuties Le Mignon, and uh she joins them and, and you know wants to dress in a way that they do with crop tops itty bitty skirts and she's doing what she thinks she has to do what kids at this age no matter who you are no matter where you are do to try to fit in at, at a time when you're not a little kid anymore but you're also not a teenager you're not a young woman and so that's what this movie is about and and the leering of them is trying to shine a light on the way that that society views women in general. I mean, the, the the dance moves that this young woman, Amy, brings to this group, like the twerking and the ass smacking and the floor humping, she sees in music videos. And she's, right. she's you know, puppeting that and thinking, okay, like I need to, or mimicking that rather, thinking I need to do this too to get self-esteem. This is all women are good for. And the movie is trying to shine a light on how damaging that is to young women's psyches. And it's persuasive in that regard. Right. And, you know, if this movie didn't have that poster, nobody would notice it. Nobody no, would no, we would not be having this conversation right. if Netflix nobody had would fucked notice. up and changed that poster. And they need to account for that. They need to explain that. Because they right. did make it look like a leering kind of thing. Right? Right. So. Well, and there's that Dance Bombs tweet that I shared with you guys. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. That's yeah, no, if you look right, at the, like, the graphics that were used to advertise Dance Bombs, they're not that different from the Netflix poster, and nobody said anything about that. How many here, seasons was Toddlers and Tiaras on? Far too right? many. I mean, with little girls younger than 11, right. all charted up with makeup and itty-bitty dresses. I mean... Well, yeah, I mean, th this is a combination of things. It's like, let's go after the thing that we haven't watched and can't really analyze. Let's throw subtlety out the window. And, uh, you know, yes, a big fuck up on the part of Netflix by doing this poster that just fed the fuel of people who didn't really want to think about things, but just sort of took it for granted. Oh, this is terrible. I read it on the internet. You know, uh, you guys remember all of the hoopla around Last Temptation of Christ? <laughs> <laughs> oh, remember? yeah. Like people everybody flipped the pissed. fuck out. I had yeah. to drive. I had to drive four hours to see that movie because I was living in Nashville, and no theater chain in Tennessee would show that movie. Or at least. So where Nashville. did you go? What state did you go to? I went, to, I went to, to Atlanta. I had to go to Atlanta, like the one theater there that was showing it. The Den of Iniquity, Atlanta. <laughs> exactly. I can't remember if there were protesters or not. I did find out that about a year after I left college, the campus cinema screened it on the Vanderbilt campus. After it was already out on like VHS or whatever, and protesters showed up, and it was just like, can we just? It's let insane. This go? Um, I, I will say one more thing about cuties, and then we'll move on. Um, what the filmmaker is trying to do is show that the tradition that this young woman comes from is just as much putting women in a box 
as what modern day technology does because she's raised in this very conservative Muslim household mm. where, you know, at age 11, her auntie is telling her she already start, begin, needs to begin thinking about who she's going to be engaged to because in right. a few years she's going to be somebody's husband. And the, the way that she becomes a woman, quote unquote, is by chopping vegetables, right? So she comes from this very conservative tradition of you know, Muslim women who have been doing the same thing all along, and that's not right for her either. And so this is an indictment of that kind of reductive. Hear that, um, right wingers? This movie women. is a critique of Islam. You should be <laughs> loving it. Something for everybody it's, here. <laughs> so she becomes a woman by chopping broccoli? Yes, yeah, Chapin oh, Bracalai. <laughs> no, but she, there's a thing that happens with her dad. Her dad's getting remarried, and she, she's told to grow up and wear a certain dress and chop vegetables and make a nice wedding banquet for him. And so these very traditional kind of homemaking roles are the ones that she's going to be relegated to if she maintains that path. And so she has to find her own path between, you know, really over-sexualized and growing up way too fast and being held back from the woman that she wants to be, be and should be. So anyway... It's worth watching. It really is for nothing else, for professional edification, for curiosity. It's very sensitive, very well done. Um, anyway, but it's a whole lot of nonsense over nothing, really. Mm. Uh, over what is a little coming of age film. Let us move on. Um, what I was watching before I talked to you guys today was the Facebook Live table read of Fast Times at Ridgemont High, which just happened last night. Did you guys watch this? I have not yet. I've been hearing it's interesting. It's really cute. It really is because it's an amazing cast of like the A-est of A-list stars. You have um, Brad Pitt is Brad, and then Julia Roberts is Stacy. And then this is cute. Jennifer Aniston is Linda. <laughs> she gets to say the line where she goes, hi, Brad. You know how cute I always thought you were. <laughs> 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 so there's some cute, some cute Brad and Jen reunion stuff going on here. Um, Shia, LaBeouf. Ja Shia LaBeouf is Jeff Spicoli. And he's total fucking method. He's smoking a joint in the front seat of a truck the whole time. And he's taking off his shirt when, when the character takes his shirt off. <laughs> his shirt's off too. And... Does he have a bagel in his pants? No, <laughs> no, but but and then Sean Penn is in it as Mr. Pizza Guy. He oh, comes funny. In, learning about Cuba, having some food. So um, it's really cute. And uh, John Legend is Charles Jefferson and Lil <laughs> Charles. Matt, this is perfect casting here. Matthew McConaughey as Damone. Oh, oh. that's good. Okay. <laughs> Who's swagger. Mr. Hand? Mr. Hand is um, Ray Liotta. No. Which is not okay. as fun as I'd hoped it would be. He, he's he's kind of playing it straight and kind of serious. But um, also very entertaining is that Morgan Freeman is doing all of the screen direction in, in the Funny. screenplay. And so you get to hear him explaining what all the characters look like and what the mall looks like. So um, that is a fundraiser for Sean Penn's core um, charity, which you know provides a lot of COVID testing and has really stepped up in ways that our own government has not. And so um, and that hey, is... If you want to hear a conversation between Christy and me about Fast Times at Ridgemont High, you should check out my other podcast, A Film and a Movie, with Dan Thompson, where we discussed that movie in uh, regards to Martin Scorsese's Mean Streets. That was very fun. Yes, I enjoyed that. Um, we got to watch the Paris Hilton documentary, you guys. At some do point, we, really? we do. Why not? Why don't you want to do this? It looks mm. fun. Have you, have you mm. seen any pieces of it at all? No. Do you know what it is? No. What is it? <laughs> It's about how you don't know the real Paris, you guys. Oh, don't we? Okay. We don't because that, the little girl voice where everything was that hot. That's not really her. When she talks, her voice is actually really down here. Her I, so voice is really low. I did an interview with her like 20 years ago, and I'll totally buy that the Paris that you see on camera typically is not Paris. Like we were asking her, I don't even remember what it was about like getting through the day or something. And, and her immediate answer is like, smoke a lot of pot. Wait, no, I can't, you can't use this. And then she went into like the rehearsed, like Paris answer. But for like, there were a couple of moments and I think it was early on enough in her career that it would, that she had forgotten that she was supposed to be on, right? right? It was like character 24 seven. Yeah. So what, what she talks about though in this is that she went to this she was sent to this boarding school in Provo, Utah. Ooh. And that really messed her up because it was a place for like wayward kids. Boarding school sounds very posh, but it was actually a place to um, rehabilitate kids who were troubled. And I guess she had been, you know, 
running out and uh, being a party girl all night at a young age, growing up in New York City. And, Boy, did that school work. Right. And so she <laughs> but it really messed, it messed her up. And so this is an exploration of how she created that Paris character as like armor, as like a defense mechanism. Mm. And now only now is she willing to really make herself vulnerable for who she actually is. So I'm going to watch it. It's on YouTube. It's on her channel. I wish her nothing but the best. <laughs> I don't necessarily care enough about her to watch this documentary, but if you tell me it's good, I will All be. right. All right. Well, I haven't watched it yet. I'll, I'll come back and I'll report to you. Let's talk about Chris Evans' dick pic. Oh, why not? <laughs> so somehow, I don't think I know the whole story of how this photo got out, but somehow uh, like a He accidentally of a put it on his Instagram story, apparently. Of a, his grid, like the grid of his photo, or maybe it was his no, camera. No, 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 the, the Instagram story. You know, you've done, you've created these, the yeah, ones yeah. that are little for 24 hours. But the thing that he put up was his camera roll, like a grid of a whole bunch of pictures on his camera roll oh, went okay. on to stories is, is what I think it is. And okay. one of them is a picture of his, his own member from his perspective. Like he's like yes. on so shooting he took his the crotch. Photo, the he took the photo captain. of his own crotch. Yes, which is not so little. Um, so that was a big deal, but I guess he, um, so it really he, is America's dick. It is America's dick. And, but he's, you know, he's a smart guy and he's got a good sense of humor and he, he handled the aftermath of it with some grace and some Very. humor. So anyway, that's out yeah. there in some form. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Dave and I had a conversation about this. Uh, this, this sort of touches on a couple of things in terms of it's, it's interesting in that it, it's something that he accidentally leaked as opposed to like the the Jennifer Lawrence, Scarlett Johansson incidents where their phone was hacked and that was like totally gross. Um, but at the same time, there is this weird thing about male nudity versus female nudity because I think because of the way, especially the, the way the rating system is set up, the way that society tends to be in a patriarchy or whatever, if you are a famous woman, there is an understanding that at some point or other, we will probably see your breasts in a movie, but it is very likely that you could be a male star and never mm -hmm. show your penis in a movie because that's, right. you know. You could be naked from, yeah, from behind. That, there goes your R rating, you know. So it's like there's a whole weird double standard about a lot of this stuff. Well, let's continue talking about um, celebrities and naked celebrities because um, there's a whole big piece that Emily Ratajkowski wrote that came out this week. I don't know if you guys saw it. I believe no. it was in New York Magazine. And it yeah, was, I saw it, it was, did you, yeah, it was this really long, it. thoughtful piece about her not having any control over her own image. And I'll try to give you the most abbreviated version of it, but it comes from a, a photo shoot she did when she was young, just starting out like 20 years old. And she went and took a bus to some photographer's house in the Catskills. And he took a bunch of Polaroids of her and he got her really drunk. And he sexually assaulted her. Oh. But also, he kept a lot of these photos, all of the photos, and beyond the ones that were supposed to have been used for an agreed-upon magazine shoot that her agent brokered, um, he did a big coffee table book, and he did a big gallery show, none of which she gave consent to. Oh. And so people, as there are nude photos there. She's drunk, and she's naked, and arching her back, and, you know, they're they're very revealing pictures when she was just starting out in her career. And he waited until she got some fame mm -hmm. and then he did it. And then he did a second book and then another one. And, and um, there's a whole story about how, how weird that is to, to see images of yourself out there and have absolutely no control over how they are used. There was a, I just read something that kind of talked about how is it, are we 20 years or it's 30 years past when the Vanessa Williams thing broke up, mm -hmm. broke, right? Like those were artistic done. pictures that she had done relatively early in her modeling career that then once she won Miss USA, somebody's like, oh, hey, mm -hmm. I'll sell these. I'll sell to Penthouse. Uh, same yeah. thing happened to Madonna too, but Madonna at least had the kind of public image where she could be like, eh, who cares, you know, because she right. came out of that whole sort of East Village scene. She was always sort of sexually provocative. She would put out the sex book not that long after anyway. So like for her, it was less of a big deal. But yeah, as, a, as the reigning Miss America, that was a big, I mean, obviously she's gone on to have a really great career since then, but nonetheless, it, it was, yeah, right. it was shitty and it's a violation. And uh, that just, this makes me very sad. 
Now, speaking of this, this, um, this think piece we are all, you know, bubbling up with here, there's actually a story in BuzzFeed News about Emily Ratajkowski, Chris Evans, and the nude photo double standard. So, yeah. there you go. Well, you know, Josh Duhamel, early in his career, took nude photos for Greg Gorman. You can very easily find them on the internet. And it's sort of like, eh, well, yeah, yeah, like nobody cares. Um, but it's like, but yeah, I think for women, there's a, there's a stigma attached or there's like, judgment that men don't get. I mean, yeah, I, I'll be curious to read that. Um, along those lines, John Boyega has stepped down as the global ambassador for Joe Malone. Do yes. you guys know what that is? Yes. It's, it's like a fragrances and soap. It's like soap and fragrances and mm, lotions right. and shit like that. Um, because in the Chinese campaign, he was replaced with somebody else, with a different local... Chinese celebrity, which happens all the time. But the thing with this particular campaign was that he was he was crucial in crafting it because it had to do with his family and his life, and it was very personal. And so they just like subbed him out and put somebody else in, and that pissed him off. And he he wrote um, in a series of tweets, "I don't have time for nonsense," and uh, and stepped down. So I think that's, that's right. awesome. And and I love the zero Fs of John Boyega. Yeah. Well, and <laughs> the Joe Malone who had created the fragrance company and then sold it off so she's not really working there anymore mm -hmm. um has gone on to say yeah they they he got a wrong deal and and mm -hmm. he's right yeah good for him that's interesting too um dancing with the stars began again this week <laughs> and among the contestants carol and amongst Baskin. the commercials carol, Carol you guys Baskin. heard about the commercial? Oh, right, oh, right, yeah. right. The, the, the best family. Part. The, the dead family, husband's family, of the, right? Of the, of the husband that she allegedly fed to the tigers, yes. And they took out ads, but only in, like, Tampa and Orlando, maybe? Like, two Florida well, TV markets, right? Well, only where she could conceivably be prosecuted, I imagine, right? Because that's... Well, the, right, and a national-level ad is really expensive. Yeah, so I can't. I can't with the. I like. I, we, I can't believe we're still talking about Tiger King. Like bad enough. Like, like <laughs> dude, that was not, this year. It's not, it's not just. I can't believe the pandemic is still happening. I can't believe we're still dealing with Tiger King. Oh, Tiger King was only a few months ago. But it's not going away. Like, because because Kate McKinnon is doing a show where she's playing Carol Baskin. That's going to be on oh. Peacock and NBC, I think. And then fucking uh, uh, Nicholas Cage yeah. is playing Tiger King in like an Amazon series. Like, see, that's oh. two on the nose. Nicholas Cage as Joe Tiger, Joe, Joe, Exotic. Exotic, Joe Exotic. That's like too on the nose, right? I don't know. It's it, too easy. It, it seems like a bit of a layup, yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, also, who else is in it? Um, like AJ McLean. Uh, Tyra, right? Isn't Tyra Tyra's famous? hosting it now. Oh, she's hosting it. Oh, okay. He's taken for over her. for Tom Bergeron and right. Aaron, Aaron Burnett. No, she's on CNN. Aaron no. Andrews. Okay. Anyway. Um, so, t yeah, so Carol Baskin on Dancing with the Stars. I can't bring myself to watch Dancing with the Stars, but it's some information that people might need. Mm. Um, Madonna, speaking of celebrity, <laughs> Madonna's going to direct her own biopic. Oh, this is so because good. Because of course she is. Ah! <laughs> I will withhold judgment until I see this thing. But if you have not watched the video of her and Diablo Cody collaborating on the screenplay by Zoom, the faces that Diablo Cody makes when Madonna says, makes certain suggestions or whatever are priceless. I haven't seen that. Is it a bit or is it real? Who knows? But if it's I, a bit, it's a, it's a brilliantly executed one. Where can one find this? Uh, Google it. It was, I think it was originally on Instagram or something, but it's floating around out there. I think there's a handful of, of celebrities that it would be awesome to watch them do movies about themselves. Like the obvious one would be Werner Herzog. That's the first right? one that occurred to me when you said that, yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> Soderbergh would be interesting because it'd be all out of sequence and... <laughs> Jump cuts, eight different, different filters. people play him. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, I, I was joking about this on Twitter and people were raising it, you know, like, yes, obviously there are a lot of great films that are autobiographical from eight and a half to all that jazz to pain and glory. Madonna's version of that, I, I, I will be very interested to see what that looks like. I'm a little skeptical. <laughs> I think there needs to be some sort of system of checks and balances here. If I had been super <laughs> We're into either Listen. of the features that she directed so far. I think I might be more into it, but That's still, I will withhold until I see the thing. And and Christy, bite your tongue. Would 
how can you want, possibly, how could you think checks and balances would have been <laughs> part of making Madonna, Madonna? I mean, Right, that's come true, on. but I would like to see her life through somebody else's prism but her own, you know? It's like if Trump were to make his own biopic about himself. <laughs> like, I don't oh, see... Oh, I actually would pr much prefer to see Madonna, right. Madonna's own take on her history, because I think, oh. like, then otherwise give me the true Hollywood story. I would like to see the Todd Haynes version where he does it like I'm not there. Yeah. <laughs> where it's about Bob Madonna. Dylan, but it's not about Bob Dylan. You know, like where it, that, that I think would be a really fast Or have she has that kind of cultural footprint. At this yeah. point. Have Kaufman do it like it's Anomalisa. <laughs> all dolls. Oh, yes. Puppet, Puppet Madonna. By or, <laughs> or Todd Haynes, like Superstar. Or Todd Haynes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so they can collaborate. So they can both bring their own doll collections. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Has Julia Garner been cast, or is that just like the speculation? I think that's just wishful thinking, but it's good thinking. I, I it's like her a casting. lot. I still haven't seen Ozark, but I liked her a lot on the American. Julia Garner scene. as Madonna. As Madonna. Julia Garner. Madonna's not playing herself? <laughs> oh, fuck. Again, nothing's been announced yet. So that's it. You know. I'm out. This is uh, Oh, I have some casting news that I oh, have to break in. I just remembered, I did see Sorry. the Joan and Melissa Rivers TV movie where they played themselves. That was a doozy. Nice. <laughs> Go ahead, Matt. Or, or unless I'm scooping you, Christy, are you going to talk about the uh, She-Hulk series news? I'm not. Please take that okay. away. I'll so use. Disney has, Disney Plus and Disney have been announced, and Marvel have, have all these shows that are coming out from the Marvel Cinematic Universe that'll be coming out in the next couple of years. We know that Falcon and Winter Soldier got shot and, and we've seen those characters. So one of the new ones that's going to be shot and hopefully we see end of 2021 or maybe 2022 is a She-Hulk series. And they have cast Orphan Black's Tatiana Maslany oh, cool. as uh, Jennifer Walters. Um, and presumably they'll CGI her up as the She-Hulk. Yeah, the way they do Mark Ruffalo in right. the Avengers movies. I think sure. that's terrific casting. Here's my so, question, because I've never watched Orphan Black. Is she funny? Because I always yes. think of She-Hulk yes. as a funny character. Yeah, she is funny. Okay, great yes. then. I'm unfamiliar with She-Hulk. Is she just like a female so, version of Hulk? She is Bruce Banner's cousin. She got a, uh, a blood transfusion from him, and it gave her the gamma powers, but not the like Hulk brain. So even when she's like big and green, she's still smart and very clever, and she's an attorney. And right. she's a, think, think uh, seven foot tall, green, uh, single female lawyer. Yeah, like she could basically be on the good fight, but she's right. also a superhero. <laughs> or what uh, was the, who was it? Um, what was the lawyer show? Um, with oh, the, Damages? Uh, no, 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 way back, and she married Harrison Ford. Um, oh, oh Ally McBeal. McBeal. It's, yeah, no, no, seriously, like that's, <laughs> Kinda, I'm yeah. hoping that the show's got a lot of that in it. Like I'd much rather be interested well, in She-Hulk's day-to-day lawyering in a superhero powered universe. Yeah, I mean, the, the original, okay, don't, don't at me Marvel people, but the most <laughs> well known run of She-Hulk that was done by John Byrne was right. also very fourth wall breaky. Like she was constantly acknowledging the fact that she was in a comic book and the ridiculous things were happening because she was in a comic book. And if they were gonna have one show on Disney Plus in the Marvel verse that did that, it would be fun if it were this one. Not that they have to, but it could I, be, it's a way to go. I think cute. that they won't do that because I think that they would get too much crap from the Deadpool fans. Well, that there is that Deadpool has kind of bitten that yeah. rhyme at this point. So mm. it anyway. sounds cute. What that if we sense. get an Animal Man show? What then? <laughs> um, have you guys seen this cute thing with Dave Grohl? No. No. There's this badass ten-year-old British drummer. Oh yes, yes, yes. I heard named about Mandy Bashell. She's awesome and she makes these videos where she you know drums along with a song and she worships Foo Fighters worships Dave Grohl and so she and Dave Grohl have been having like a, a drum off with each other and the videos are super cute she's just like radiant and you know has great energy um she's 10 and he wrote a song for her and played it I mean she played she played Everlong, and it's really, really fast. Like, after after the bridge, it gets really, really fast, and she's uh, her whole face is like, ah, 
<laughs> She's adorable. So you can find those videos anywhere. Um, Alonzo, yes. how pumped? Are, go ahead. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, that just makes me. That reminds me of like how Rob Zombie is has for years championed what's that group? Um, Suzuka. Um, it's I think it's Suzuka Nakamoto, which is this like trio of teen girls that okay. play heavy metal. And whenever people are like, oh, they can't rock out, people like Rob Zombie and Rob Halford are like, oh, no, no, fuck you. These are the <laughs> hardest rocking people we've ever met. This little girl is amazing. She's adorable. She's also a badass. And there's an episode of, there's, sorry, one last thing. There's an episode of The Muppets that's currently being rerun on Disney Plus, their, their one season sitcom, where Dave Grohl and Animal have a, a <laughs> drum off. So that's pretty cute. Awesome. How pumped are you for the gay Lifetime Christmas movie? <laughs> Uh, as the kids say, I'm living for this. Uh, yeah, so Lifetime announced their 30, 30, count them, new Christmas movies that are airing this year, starting in late October, the same night that uh, Hallmark's Countdown to Christmas kicks off. And yeah, this year we're getting the gay movie, we're getting an Asian American movie that's directed by Jennifer Liao uh, and starring, uh, co-starring Tai Ma. Uh, and we're getting uh, uh, Allie Stroker, I believe is her name, the, the Tony-winning uh, performer from Oklahoma who is a, uh, uses a wheelchair, is starring in a film also. So, like, they are really kicking out the jams as far as, like, their whole thing is, like, Christmas is for everybody. And so they're really, like, talking about having Christmas be diverse this year. So between the Gay Lifetime movie and the upcoming uh, Cleo Duvall-directed film with... Uh, Kristen Stewart and uh, Mackenzie Davis as a lesbian ooh, couple at Christmas. Ooh. It's my I year, baby. <laughs> I can't wait to hear how Ted Cruz and the rest of the assholes are going to spin <laughs> those movies into somehow being a part of the war on Christmas. Oh, because they will. No, they've already gone after Hallmark for even just saying they want to up their LGBT content. And Breitbart wrote some shitty piece about Lifetime. I'm thinking, as like the right wing gives a shit about Lifetime or any other network that is aimed at women. Like, the, don't pretend. And and where were you when like, you know, Killer Pool Boy was airing <laughs> on Lifetime? Like, you don't give a shit about Lifetime. Shut up. I tune in for wholesome family entertainment. I don't want to yeah. shield my children's eyes when women kiss each other. Yeah. Oh, that's what that's the shit that li that Hallmark's been dealing with, and I think I I love Hallmark's not giving a shit about that's that all I response watch. these days. That's really yeah. funny. So anyway, this is Ben Lewis and Blake Lee co-starring in the Christmas setup. Yes, a real life married couple. So I. COVID be damned, they get to make out. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cute. Anyway, so that will be good. Um, okay, this is not a good piece of interest of news. J.K. Rowling's new book. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you seen I, this? Okay, it's called Troubled Blood. It's about a, a cisgender male who dresses up as a woman to murder his female victims. I can't with her anymore. I'm sorry. We're done. What she, happened? She, she is my. She is on my Chick Fil A list of like. Huh? You know what? I enjoyed you once, but I cannot give you another dime ever. I mean, if we look back at Harry Potter, like, are there traces of this kind of transphobia? Yes. yes. I can't, I can't yes, recall. Actually, like what? Yes, actually. Yes, because there's one thing that's come up is a scene where uh, Hermione has used the potion that makes her change shape, and she's. Uh, now a man and she's now a boy and the way that um rowling is writing is that she doesn't change the like i think she i can't remember but like however she's writing the pronouns for the character uh -huh. is the opposite way that mm -hmm. you would expect to do it if somebody actually like it's not it's the it's what somebody says is like no that's not the that's not it Okay. Uh, I, yeah, I, I have I'm not. I'm sure somebody will jump in in the comments and tell. I haven't done a deep critique, but there are a lot of trans writers who have had really interesting things to say about this whole thing. I would say if you're not following like Riley Just Silverman on Twitter, Twitter or Daniel Solzman or uh, Alexander Billings, just to name a few, like they've they've all got much deeper thoughts on this than I do. But yeah, we're done, J.K. No, but, that's it. You know, one thing I do want to jump in and say is is look like. The stuff that, she, like, that doesn't necessarily mean, like, if you're getting good stuff and good messaging out of the Harry Potter series, great. Like, right, if you're learning that, like, you can, you know, you can make friends and rely on them and, and like, take away something positive that is not transphobic 
and not problematic out of those books, like that's okay, that's fine. Um, I, I wouldn't buy Cruz, anything I'm new. Not, for... I'm not trying to cancel anybody. I mean, yes, the Harry right. Potter books and movies have brought a lot of joy to a lot of people, and if they're your jam, great. I personally am never spending another dime on this woman's work because she is, and frankly, it is too kind to call her a turf. I, my, my preferred acronym is FART, which is Feminism Appropriating Reactionary Transphobes. I'm not down with this. And like the trans community has been very vocal about this and good on them and may they continue the fight because why JK Rowling from her position of wealth and power has decided that this is going to be the hill that she dies on. I don't get it, but I'm not going to be part of it. The term I prefer surprising. is asshole. <laughs> which, which is an acronym for something, I'm sure. <laughs> um, I, I'm a little surprised though to see this streak in her, this unfortunate streak in her because there did seem to be like an effortless kind of multiculturalism within the Harry Potter universe. And because yeah. Dumbledore is gay, you know, like she seemed to well, be never canonically retroactively <laughs> gay. Right. Well, I, even <laughs> just like, I think the later books, like when you look at characters like Dolores Umbridge, that seemed to be a very direct dig on mm -hmm. like Bush fascism. And, and, and yeah, fascism, the more reactionary elements of the British government. But again, like, you know, you can't necessarily rely on liberals to be, you know, on top of this shit. And, and they will draw these lines in the sand of like, I'm progressive about this, but you can go fuck yeah. yourself. And so it's like, well, no. That's weird. Um, there is a um, new Black Widow date, yes. right? Black oh, Widow got yes. pushed to what? Is it, is it Christmas? I think it's February. Well, it's February now. Okay. I know they yeah. keep pushing it. Yeah, no, Wonder Woman got pushed to Christmas. Wonder Woman was Christmas. That's right. So I know there's that. Also, there's a new Mandalorian trailer, you guys. Which Baby Yoda not... gets a cute little coat. Yes, and speaking of uh, speaking of people who are obnoxious about trans rights, mm -hmm. um, Gina Carano. Oh God, Let's yeah, talk I read about, about that. I read about that too. Oh, I don't yeah. know this whole story. Fill me in on this. I mean, story. she's what been hitting the head so many times. Do we really want to take any uh, direction? From that's that? the thing. Like, I was I read this article about it today, and he was like. Is it just maybe that she's not very bright? Because the the her 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 trans nonsense came after a bunch of COVID denialism, so it's like she's just been on a roll, oh. let's say, on Twitter, and it's kind of like, lady. What did she say about transgender people? She, she changed she, her pronouns she, to beep bop boop. boop, as opposed to she her hers. Making fun of how people prefer to be addressed. Yeah. Yes, oh. and then of course she tried to twist it around that like if you were offended by it, then you're the problem. You know, right. it's like whatever. Not apology, apology. <laughs> exactly, but again, like, and it's like, okay, I'm fine, sorry, that's your deal, that's your deal. But, this is, but, but coming on the heels of like her COVID denialism, it's like, oh, maybe you're just not very bright. Huh, okay. Um, Ethan Hawke also, is gonna direct, go ahead. Oh, sorry, I just, there's a, I've got a guy working on the pool heater, so. Uh, okay. I don't you, hear it. For those watching uh, behind me, it's the guy working on the pool. <laughs> um, Ethan Hawke is going to direct a documentary about Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward, which has been authorized by the family. So okay. that means a lot of access, but maybe means it's not exactly warts and all. Well, who knows? <laughs> when we talk about the way I see it, I, I have some ideas about the modern state of documentary. <laughs> we'll get into um, that more. Neil Patrick Harris and his husband and their two twin kids had COVID. Oh, no, I hadn't heard that. Yes, mm. they are all better now. And, uh, uh, what worries me is what is there's so much we don't know about the sort of lingering after effects. Like you, you hear about people who like recover and then months later have these other lung issues and stuff. And so it's like I'm thrilled for everybody who's managed to recover so far. But like this is there's a lot. The story is not done. And also the way that you can't like put all into one category, here are the ways folks still feel in the aftermath. Like it's right. totally different for everybody because it's a novel coronavirus. Mm. We just don't know. Anyway, thankfully we have uh, stuff to watch and talk about to keep us distracted while we are all still stuck at home six Indeed. plus months into this. That's all I got. Marquis? Matt, do uh, you think? Yes, Marquis. All right. Uh, and for one of these with our Croatian friend, I'm going to read his spiel. Oh, well, fine. <laughs> uh, all right. I will share the screen. Uh, our first picture um, once uh, is this. It's the one I used at the top of the show. Oh, cool. Um, uh, this is the Wiltern. This is local to us. Mm. Uh, and they remind us, amplify your voice. Uh, vote November 3rd. 
go to headcount.org. The last concert I went to before the world shut down was at the Will Turn. It was our friends at Silver Sun Pickups. Uh, there you go. Yeah, that's a great venue. I saw really um, I one of the many wonderful uh, uh, Sharon Jones shows I got to see when she would come to L.A. I saw it there. Um, I also saw uh, Elvis Costello there, and he had put on a bunch of weight. Uh, ah. And he had, like, a beard even longer, like, longer than Alonzo's is right now. Mm -hmm. um, it was, yeah, it was, it was, I mean, it was a good show, but it was, like, it's kind of a weird scene. I think I saw him there, too. I saw also The Pretenders when I was pregnant, and I went to Lebowski Fest there when I was pregnant. I saw the Pet Shop Boys there. That's all I got. Ooh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I've seen a bunch of stuff over there. I um, also went to the DJ Shadow uh, Cut Chemist show that was there that they were doing, and Kid Koala um, opened the show, and he's amazing. So um, if you've never heard of Kid Koala, he does the scratching on and turntablism on the Gorillaz records. And he, if you can track it down, there's a wonderful beat juggling live remix that he does of uh, Moon River uh, that is jaw dropping. Uh, oh, yeah. okay. So look that up. Uh, okay, let me get my notes out. Um, our first one is from um, our friend. Uh, oh, so Alexander Sisetta yes. went to see Tenet and what he says, here, here's his message. Hello, Christy. Hello, Matt. Hello, Alonzo. Greetings to the Breakfast Club. I'm Alexander, a movie freak from the beautiful Adriatic town of Zadar in Croatia, also working in showbiz for years. I've been watching your YouTube show since the early days of What the Flick. Keep on doing with the great work, guys. I have seen Tenet last week in local theater. If you want me to, I can send you pics from the Tenet screening. You can put them in your marquee in your regular weekly YouTube video. Bye-bye for now. All the best to the best movie trio there is online. Thank you, Aww. Alexander. Aww. So Very here nice. his his poster of Tenet. He has his movie ticket. And uh, I don't know what kind of distancing protocols they had there, but that's where he saw it. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Alexander. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Next up, a couple pictures from Jeff Swanson um, giving us uh, the latest from <laughs> The Parkway Theater, uh, he says, a little love for John Hughes here at the Parkway Theater in Minneapolis. <laughs> you guys are breathing all right on the West Coast. So uh, this one is the Parkway Marquee, 16 nasal swabs. Cute. And so 16 candles and then pretty in PJs. <laughs> uh, then uh, Henry Ang, who's sent us a few pictures uh, previously, says, uh, thanks for the shout out. Did you ever get a photo of the loft in Tucson? If not, here is the loft in Tucson. He says it was taken back in July. Uh, this is the Loft Cinema marquee that says uh, Black Lives Matter. Um, and then it says on the second marquee, mask on, visit loftcinema.org for streaming titles, curbside concessions, pickup, uh, and Friday and Saturday pre-order only. Uh, he also sends us, and I love this one. This is from Casa Video, uh, <laughs> which he says, here is the best video store in Arizona, still operating in uh -huh. Tucson. Uh, it's Casa Video, and there is a handwritten, hand-painted sign. There's a white sheet that says, I assure you, we're open. Uh, uh, <laughs> excellent clerk's reference. Uh, thank so thank you, Henry. Uh, Jacob Colness sent in a couple <laughs> pictures from Fargo, uh, North Dakota. Uh, this is the Fargo Theater. Uh, one marquee, and I love that this is in black and white. Yes, so nice, touch. Uh, nice touch. A nice touch. Every time a mask is worn, an angel gets his way. Uh, and then an, uh, an, a more recent one. All right, Mr. DeVille, I'm ready for my mask. That's great. Right? Um, I love the Fargo's marquee. It's that so is pretty. such a great sign. Yeah, it's, beautiful. it's gorgeous. Um, this one comes from James <laughs> Ponsold. It was on his Instagram. Uh, it's the Kim Singh Theater. And the marquee says, remember when the worst thing last year was the Game of Thrones finale? Yes, we do remember. Our friend um, James Ponsel, filmmaker yes. James Ponsel. So Jessica Forever uh, Socially Distanced Aldrich, a.k.a. at the Mad J Woman, uh, writes and says, I don't know if anyone has put the Littles marquee in our path, but here are some. Uh, this is the Little Theater in uh, Rochester, New York, and somebody who's been very good with Photoshop has put some pictures together on their uh, super cool digital marquee. So this is uh, a picture of... Um, from the poster of Portrait of a Lady on Fire, uh, and the two leads are masked in it, and it says, wear a mask. Oh, cute. Uh, the artist does not have her nose covered, which is not well, how to do it. 
That's why she's on fire. <laughs> or no, the other one's on fire. Uh, all right, so this is Black Panther. It says wear a mask. Uh, next one is Jason. <laughs> uh, wear a mask. Oh, and this yeah. last one is... Uh, <laughs> wait, this last one is Jim Carrey from The Mask wearing, saying, wear a mask. Uh, and look, wear a mask uh, is in the mask yeah, font. font. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Jessica, thank you for uh, sending those over. Um, all right, next piece is uh, Patrick mm. Stevenson. He writes, if you're thinking the sky is less orange than it was this morning, you've just gotten used to it. Uh, try adjusting your phone settings in pro camera mode to daylight balance for an accurate depiction or try looking at some indoor tungsten lights for a bit. This is the craziest light I've ever seen outdoors. The air is also chilly, I'm assuming, because the sun has been blocked all day. Is this how the Ice Age started, A. Eh? Uh, and this is, I can just barely read, it's the Empress the Theater. Theater. Uh, and one side says the Vallejo Jazz Society, uh, Paul Manson uh, Quintet, uh, free live stream, so Sunday, September 6th uh, at 5 p.m. Uh, the other thing we missed was Yakov Smirnoff live comedy, uh, Saturday, <laughs> August 29th. Uh, 6 p.m. Remember, in Soviet Russia, air breathes you. Yeah. And this, and this photo is from like a, more than a week ago, so I, I'm sure conditions have improved by now. But that yeah, must I be, hope. is that is that Vallejo in the East Bay? Is that what it is? It must uh, be. If, must be. He didn't say, but I Vallejo guess that's what it is. Bay. Yeah, I mean, if that's the Empress, then I mean, I assume so. So anyway. Uh, and then the last one's one I came across. <laughs> it's it's just outside a uh, car wash or uh, gas station. It says the air is so toxic, I might date it. Um, so that's it for this week. That's all the marquees. Thank you and guys yes, so much. Just to confirm, the Empress Theater is in Vallejo. Okay. Good. Awesome. Well, uh, you know, we're still here, and you're still here, and we're gonna we're gonna make it through, and uh, we're gonna make it after all. So, by the way, this week marks the 50th anniversary of the premiere of the Mary Tyler Moore Show. We all toss our hats in the air and appreciate. Indeed, we shall. Yes. Oh, all right. Let's today. Oh, dang it. As always, thanks for watching, you guys. Uh, like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, check us out on the social media at BeFastAllDay on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And do visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash BeFastAllDay. Uh, we're recapping shows like HBO's The Vow and Lovecraft Country. And uh, we're in the last few days of the selection of which Diana Rigg classic we'll be reviewing this month, Evil Under the Sun and uh, uh, Honor Majesty's Secret Service are still neck and neck. So, you know, join at the $5 level and have your voice heard. Uh, there's uh, several other uh, entries in there that, could, who knows, could make a last-minute surge. But anyway, thanks for watching. As always, take care of yourselves and each other, and we'll see you next time. Bye.